How's it guys? 808 here and in this video, uh, part 1 series, I'm going to show you guys how to read write the NAND of the 3DS XL. This tutorial is strictly for the 3DS XL. Uh, I guess you could ask what the purpose of reading and writing the NAND is. You know, say like one day you're playing with your 3DS XL and the next day you've got the dreaded blue screen of death and you're out of warranty. Well, here's a do-it-yourself guide that'll help you create a backup which you can restore to if you ever get that blue screen of death. This doesn't work if you already got it, but if you have a 100% working console, follow this tutorial. This is the wrong tool set, disregard it, we needed a double zero. I was only able to get these four screws off in this area. Alright, let's start by removing all the peripherals from the 3DS XL, the game card, your stylus, and your SD card. Using a double zero Phillips head screwdriver, we're going to take off these two bottom screws that hold the battery cover on. Alright, so there's an indent right underneath the Wi-Fi signal. This area of the battery cover is just clipped on, it snaps right off. So you want to work your way from the back to the front of the battery cover. And do this for the other side as well. Working your way from the back of the 3DS XL to the front, be careful there is a clip at the front so you want to lift it from the back to the front and the little cover comes right off. And before we move any further, take the battery out and also don't use sharp objects on the feet, your nails work fine. Now let's take out all the 7 screws holding the bottom cover in place. Don't forget this small guy right here where the cartridge sits. Here I just wanted to show you guys my screwdriver that I'm using. It's general brand and it's uh, I think it's an 18 piece set but it's yeah it's a multi-head 18 piece set and here is the double zero uh, Phillips head. Okay, so let's get back to finishing the screws. Disregard the battery in this next clip, but once you have the screws removed, right along this seam this is where it comes apart and so you just want to lift up but be careful because the LNR buttons are held to the motherboard with ribbon cable and you don't want to rip those so let's move along very gently take the bottom cover off like such and here I'm showing you guys the right side uh, ribbon cable and the left side ribbon cable. Using your finger now, go ahead and uh, pry the uh, ribbon cable clips off from the motherboard and set the bottom cover off to the side and take a look at our working space. Uh, this is just for reference. I wanted to show you guys where I mounted my um, my wire butt connector. So that's the inside that I will be soldering to. That's the outside where I will be connecting to. And here's just another view. Alright, moving along. 
and we'll be working right here in between this uh, either Samsung or Toshiba chip and the uh, cartridge caddy. Alright, here's our tools. This is some soldering flux or tinning flux. It's just in a syringe. You're gonna need, um, I have a, a four inch wire and I got it out of some old uh, monitor and of course your uh, I use the 15 watt iron and here's my solder I don't do a whole lot of soldering so I just go to Radio Shack and I buy these these guys I'm trying to get it in focus here for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm using Alright, so let's go over the work area once again. Um, 3DS XLs will either have a large Samsung or Toshiba chip, and uh, we're going to be working with the three golden pads right here. The top one is your data zero, your second one is your CMD, and your last one is your CLK. And this little solar blob right here is your ground. Okay, so let's go over that again. The top golden pad is going to be your data zero, second is your CMD, and the third is your CLK, and of course ground. Alright, so before you solder your wire, you want to tin the ends of the wires. That's just using some flux and some solder. You want to put a couple dabs of solder onto the ends of your wires. It makes it easier for soldering. Here, what I'm doing is I'm applying the uh, tinning flux to the pads that we'll be working with and soldering the wires to the pads. I used color wire, it's just my preference, but it helped me stay organized. People label their wires because essentially these um, soldering points are going to run all the way to the SD card adapter that we will be using later on in this tutorial. And here we just want to put a crease in our wire so that way it fits underneath the bottom cover. And now we're going to be soldering those wires to the butt connector, uh, the inside of the bottom cover. And I need to stress that um, colors need to line up here because again you know it's coming from the NAND going all the way to the SD card so you want to make sure that it all lines up the colors all match very important that you do that otherwise you're gonna have to redo your work again Let's take that Q-tip and clean off the excess um, flux from the motherboard because if you leave it on it can be corrosive and damage the motherboard. Do it to both ends of the wire. And now let's go ahead and clip the left and right ribbon cables back onto the motherboard and close her up. While you guys are watching me close this up, I just want to add on a note that after everything's said and done, you get it back together and it's not working right. More than most of the time, it's because of solder work. You need to double check your, your lines and also get a multimeter and double check your work because you can't see uh, cold solder joints with your naked eye. You know, 
like double and triple check your work and even like be careful of like solder splashes because you know it can lead to other things shorting out so you know watch out for those kind of stuff so, like solder splashes and triple you know quadruple check your work you know you just want to be thorough with what you do under the hood if you know what I mean let's go ahead and put the battery back in and fire up make sure everything still works Once you got the bottom cover fastened, let's go ahead and set the 3DS off to the side because we're now going to be working with the uh, SD adapter side of things. So here we got my wire and an SD card adapter that I've already split open. It's very easy. Um, you can just take a razor blade and wedge it in there and it should come out, come apart very easily. And once you crack open your SD adapter, you'll see eight legs. You're gonna skip the first two and solder your CMD to leg three. Skip four because four is grounded or bridge grounded with six. Uh, five, you're gonna solder your CLK to and six is your ground and 7 is going to be your data zero line. And because we broke the original seam, grab the hot glue gun and seal it all up. But don't forget this little tab here, the lock unlock tab. Because if it's not on there, you're not going to be able to write to the 3DS XL. So once everything's done, you're going to take your, your makeshift SD adapter. You're going to plug it into your 3DS XL first. Next, you're going to take your USB um, SD card reader and you're gonna connect the 3DS XL SD card to the card reader and power on the 3DS XL. At this point you'll probably get a different boot ROM error message than I have there but disregard that just as long as you got the blue screen to come up you're ready to hook it up to your computer <laughs> 